Anishta, I listened to what you said about uh, Kelch's liaison with Gresham House, and I'm not clear about whether you are in favour of a review of this arrangement. It was reported that you are. So if you could give some clarity on that and what form it might take and indeed the timeline. Now, one of the arguments that you and others have used to support this culture arrangement is that we can't get to 18 per cent of land afforestation without significant investment from investment funds, vulture funds, whatever. Yet, Pornishta, you said you might look at alternatives. If every farmer in Ireland with a holding of 50 acres was properly incentivized to plant 1,000 trees, that's one acre, and every farmer with 100 acres was incentivized to plant 2,000 trees, that's two acres, and pro rata, we could reach our forestry targets by proactively engaging with farmers and local communities and public authorities on certain state-owned lands. But instead, Tanishta, we're doing what we have done time and time again. We are engaging with large investment funds, Irish and foreign, because it's easier. We tick the box, we get it done. But we're ignoring the impact on communities, the negative impact on local farmers, ignoring the fact that the kind of policy being pursued will fundamentally change settlement patterns in the West, the Northwest, the Southwest, parts of the Midlands and other parts of the country. And while it's a subject for another day, and I know you're aware of it, the cumulative effects of this type of forestry policy as well as the rewetting targets, both our own and the EU, will fundamentally affect settlement patterns in Ireland. If it's government policy to do that, say so, and let the people know. But it's the worst and most dishonest type of policy when certain events occur, whether it's land clearances or abandonment, etc. If they occur because they are driven by other policies that a government pursues, forestry, whatever, but then a government washes its hands and says, it's not us, it's Europe, it's climate change, but it is you because you make the decisions and you're responsible for the outcome. Now, another major concern is how this plan will drive up the price of land and make it unprofitable for any local farmer to purchase land for any type of agricultural activity. If you want to see the reality of this, go to County Leitrim, where already the price of land being paid for a forest station means no local farmer can compete to buy that land for agricultural use or for agroforestry, which is what I proposed. You might as well put up a sign and say, no locals need plight. So, Tanish, can you Thank confirm you, that you support a review of the culture plan? Give us a timeline and tell us what form it Tanishka, will take. Please. First of all, I thank the Deputy again for raising this, um, along with Deputy Kearns, because it is a very, very important issue. Um, and the government's policy is to increase, as you said, our current, our forest estate from its current level of 11%, um, um, equating to, that's at the moment about 808,848 hectares, to a level of 18% by 2050. This will require an additional 450,000 hectares of new forests by 2050. Uh, so, Quilta, um, and this is to create a carbon, so Quilta have, in its strategic vision, is committed to enabling 100,000 new hectares of new forests by 2050 to create a carbon sink of about 18 million tonnes of CO2. Half of these forests will be native woodlands. Uh, the other half will be forests for quality timber production, which will be used in large part to displace emissions-intensive building materials such as steel um, and cement. Now, my view is, and I think the ministers will be communicating this at the Quilta today, Quilta legally um, didn't need the approval of government in respect of this. But I take your point. Overall public policy has to be clear also uh, in terms of giving clear views. My view is, uh, again subject to state aid rules, uh, that I would want the land to be in state ownership, uh, basically, in terms of forestry. Uh, now, farmers will be and there are individual private operators as well. So we want farmers to drive the bulk of this. So we have to be careful of utilisation of the word private and public, but there can be no selling off of any state forest or anything like that. 
I think the state should itself be more actively involved in purchasing land too. Now that will create tensions in terms of you know, pricing and so on like that, but I think we need to purchase land for native woodlands. I think we need to purchase land for simple rewilding at its most basic because the biodiversity challenge is so crucial. We're not at the races in respect to meeting the biodiversity challenge just yet. I think Minister Noonan and others, we've really made huge progress in the last two and a half years with doubling the NWPS budget, it now becoming an agency within government for the first time in a long time. The NWPS has found its feet uh, and has got great underpinning. Uh, and I'm very passionately committed to this biodiversity agenda. So I've been asking agencies, go and buy land um, for rewilding, for native woodlands. We will also need commercial forestry as well um, and in, in terms of the, the, you know, the construction industry getting more carbon efficient measures and mechanisms to build houses into the future. Our timber frame construction is very low in this country. In comparison to Scotland, for example, it's a pitiful comparison. The real issue for us is to get from the low level we're currently at. There was huge progress made in the 80s and the 90s. That has stalled in more recent times. Uh, I think the more fundamental part Thank of the you, government Tony. strategy is the premiums uh, and the huge increase there, which really knows a very significant incentive for farmers maybe to I'm use more their land for farm station. Deputy Harkin. Thank you, Kermana. I don't think I could disagree with the word you've said, but the problem is that what you have said is not what's happening. I, I support your forestry policy in the sense of getting to 18 percent. What I don't support is how you're going about part of it, because the implications of that, as I have outlined, are absolutely huge. You said you want land to be in state ownership. I fully agree with you. But is the policy that is being currently pursued going to ensure that? I mean, already a thousand acres have been bought in Tipperary by Gresham House last July. It's already underway. It's happening. That's standing forest. So you're saying one thing, Tonishta, and I agree with you, but what is actually happening on the ground is different. And you talk about the real issue is to get it, get it done. Yes, it is. I have given you an example of one of the ways you could do it, to engage proactively with farmers right across the country, with communities. You can go a long way doing that, Thank instead you, of Harkin. inviting in the investment and the vulture funds to tick the box and get it done quickly. Please pause what's happening and conduct a review. Again, I think the, the size of the fund will be about 200 million. The fund aims ultimately to own a total of 12,000 hectares of forest, this is what I've been informed. Uh, and this equates to roughly 1.5% of our total existing forest estate. Uh, of those 12,000 hectares of forests, roughly 3,500 hectares will be new forests, which the fund hopes to plant over the next five years. That's an average of 700 hectares of new forest per annum for each of the next five years, out of an existing annual target of 8,000 hectares per annum. The remainder of the 12,000 hectares purchased by the fund will be existing forests. Um, so the percentage uh, impact of this, uh, sorry, the impact of this particular initiative by Quilte uh, is relatively low. We will be saying to, to Quilte we want other model, models now developed in, tra in terms of driving the overall forestry, the overall forestry uh, agenda and particularly really exponentially growing uh, the number of trees that we plant Thank you, uh, every year. <laughs>